When does someone become a master? Is it the amount of time spent on a craft or the success you achieved with it? In this Autorama original series, we'll travel throughout the United States and discover people who spent countless hours perfecting their craft and finding their own voice. Because being a master today means being able to recognize that voice and inspire people to find their own. The challenge for me is everywhere I go in the world to try to find the palette that that destination and landscape provides. And I try to do what I can to tell that story and emphasize that unique palette. My name is Eric Rubens. I'm a photographer based in Southern California. I grew up in San Diego and always was in love with the coast. And so when I got into photography, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to bring my hometown to life through the colors that I saw. I first got into photography when I was actually an electrical engineer. So I would work nine to five every day and I would be looking for anything to do to end the day other than sitting at my desk and kind of closing the computer for the day. So I would drive to the beach every day in San Diego and I'd oftentimes get there with five to 10 minutes to go to catch the sunset. And it kind of became my mission to do what I could to capture that moment in a unique way each day and share it with other people. I got on right when Instagram was kind of emerging. So I had a budding passion and an outlet to share it with as well. It just kind of started taking off really organically. I just started sharing pictures every day, never truthfully thought it would turn into anything. And it went from, you know, years and years of really no business plan whatsoever to getting my first opportunities and really just running with it from there. I never really had a vision to pursue art. I, I didn't really get treated to art history or, you know, finding out who photographers who had kind of pioneered the, the way for me to follow. I kind of just got thrown into this new age of photography and it was kind of up to me to execute my own vision and, and find my own path. In the early days of just going on Instagram and seeing people who were sharing so many different parts of the world that I frankly didn't even know existed, I think that that element of traveling and inspiration was kind of what drove me to pursue photography. My style of photography um, always looks to dance on the knife's edge of color and light. So I thought that sunset was always the one time of the day when everyone seemed to come together. And no matter whether they had a stressful day or the best day of their life, it was a collective pause where everyone just seemed to appreciate that moment together. And it became my mission to try to do what I could to capture and emphasize that fleeting moment in time. A lot of the times, especially on Instagram, People try to curate their grid to have a uniform look and vibe, whether it's kind of a similar color palette or a tone that's pretty consistent throughout their body of work. And for me, I, I thought that when I travel to islands, it was such a vivid blue. And when I'm home, the sunsets were such a vivid orange and red. And I thought I would be doing myself a disservice as an artist to try to tone all those down to make them look similar together. So I instead, I guess, tried to brace kind of the opposite mentality where I would just try to take each piece of art as an individual project and try to showcase that as dramatically as possible and not worry about how it stood next to the piece that was gonna live on the grid directly next to it. So I think the challenge that, that I always try to do is when I shoot a scene, I try to position it so that anyone can imagine being there. I try to not make the experience too unique to myself. And I think that that's something that Oftentimes a lot of people on Instagram, I mean, it probably goes a little bit more towards the influencer lifestyle when they're exposed to travel or working with resorts or doing this stuff. You often want to share your experiences and make it about you. So I think that's one thing I think about a lot is aspiration versus inspiration. One is you're really trying to encourage someone to go do something and have their own experience there. And another one is you're really trying to have someone long to be like you or to have your experience. And I much more so want someone to go off and achieve their own happiness than to strive to be like me. My strength as a photographer is getting large, different amount of compositions in a very short period of time. And I think that that all comes from back to those early days when I was learning how to do photography. I had such a short window of time after my engineering job to get to the beach, get set up and try to get three or four different looking shots. I don't like to have any 
preconceived notions about what I'm gonna get somewhere. I mean, I'll do a little bit of research in terms of what spots I wanna to go to, but I'm not gonna do the research of where the sun sets and what peak I need to climb onto to get the sun flare behind the peak of the mountain. So typically when I research a spot ahead of time, I'll go to Instagram because I think it's the best for kind of visually laying out a grid of the top photos people have captured recently. That'll at least give me a general idea of what I think will stand out and pair well with my style. Google Maps, I utilize that quite a bit to get a lay of the land and try to get an idea of what aerial photography will look like. But outside of that, I don't really utilize too many tools. I do my best when I'm improvising on the spot and that oftentimes just means driving around, seeing how stuff looks. And I think that it's actually better that way in my opinion because a lot of the times when I have tried to plan out that perfect shot, the experience gets ruined by cloud coverage or just some circumstances that are well out of my control. And I think the more that you have these expectations about the shot that you're gonna get, the more you open yourself up to disappointment if you're not able to get that shot. My gear breakdown, I, I use the Sony A1 for pretty much all my content and I use the A7S 3 for video jobs. In terms of lenses, I stick to the 16 to 35 pretty heavily because if you notice, a lot of my favorite shots over the years have very dramatic clouds that stretch up pretty high. So utilizing a wide angle lens is pretty critical for what I do. At the same time, I love those compression shots of the sun and trying to get a surfer in the sunset or an island in the distance at the sunset. So. I use the Sony 100 to 400 millimeter. Most of the lenses that I use are fast lenses. I mean, I, I need to shoot at 2.8 or lower oftentimes because I'm shooting at sunset or, or pretty poor lighting conditions. So I think that's the one unique time where having nicer gear actually does kind of pay off because I mean, having the Sony A1 that I shoot with is it's incredible in low light. So I can shoot handheld 30 minutes past sunset. The number one piece of gear that I cannot live without is a polarizer. Um, that really helps emphasize the clouds in my work and cuts down the glare of the water. And I think that the colors that I try to capture when I edit wouldn't be anywhere near the same if I didn't utilize one. I've used Polar Pro the last few years for their polarizers. I think their gear is very durable, holds up very well. I and mean, it's good for a person like me who doesn't always treat their stuff the best. Drones, I just got the Mavic 3 Cine. I think that the battery life is incredibly good on that, and I've noticed the dynamic range is really good on it. The video is incredibly strong. I've been shooting Apple ProRes video and color grading it and been able to extract a lot of color. I'm good with just a wide angle lens, a camera, a polarizer, and running along the beach trying to get as much as I can. I stick to Lightroom for probably 95 or more percent of my work. I definitely edit the tone curve pretty similarly each time, and I have a pretty standard S curve because I like to push the whites of the sunset in particular make them a little bit more dramatic, almost to the borderline of being overexposed. I'll play with the, the blacks, the whites, the split toning a lot, trying to emphasize certain colors of the sunset based on what it looked like. I just think it's, it's really hard to kind of standardize. I do this kind of color at sunset because truly, I mean, for anyone who's watched a sunset, you know, they're, they're all so different. And so I think it's up to me to kind of uniquely figure out how to present each one in a fun and, uh, catchy way. And I've never really tried to over dramatize anything that wasn't in the shot outside of touching up color and light. I don't think there's anything wrong with any other style or any other art that people pursue. But just for me personally, I've always just thought if I can't catch the best sunset of all time in a spot, like I, I don't worry about it. It's, it's kind of just the way it was given to me. And um, it's up to me to try to do the best I can with those circumstances. And I don't worry about trying to make it the perfect shot of all time. One of the, the hardest shots that I ever went for, and it's not even a shot that other people don't have, but it's just the, the simple shot of the sun setting below the pier in San Diego. It happens once or twice a year, but I remember I went for the shot a couple years in a row and it happened to be overcast that day. So that was a, uh, you know, a year or two of just waiting for this one particular shot that I wanted over and over. I remember when I got it, I was just so happy. I, I think it was, I just set the camera up on the tripod and actually had it do a time lapse to get the stills because I wanted to enjoy the moment. So a balance a lot of people have trouble achieving is to be appreciative and be in the moments, but also try to capture the shots and do the job that you're tasked with doing. And so I think I've gotten better at that over the years at, at trying to realize which moments are really special in life, especially when I'm with you know my wife, my baby, my friends, my parents, and making sure that I'm not someone who's just completely disconnected from that moment. 
I would encourage anyone who's starting off to just push themselves to find a bunch of different scenes, figure out which ones you really enjoy shooting because I think everyone who views work or reads about someone's work, they can tell if the person who shot it was passionate about it or really enjoys doing what they're doing. Looking at my body work, my bread and butter is probably the ocean, sunsets. That's kind of the style that I've gravitated towards over the years. But I think part of the key in finding that is I expose myself to a lot of different scenes. So I, I went through that exercise and I feel like I figured out what I needed to do to shoot those scenes and still stay unique to my style. And so I think that you have to really love what you're doing and it'll come across in your work. And I think you find that by trying a lot of different things and slowly over time, you'll realize what your calling is.